Hey everyone, welcome to another development stream. I'm just going to set up the restream on watchmework.com and you guys can listen to some cool intro music. Almost done here. I'm just going to pop out my chat windows, optimize my workspace a little bit. Whoops. A little bit of feedback there from the restream. Alrighty. All right, on time with the music too. I'm getting pretty good at this. All right. Um, thanks everybody for joining in for another development stream. Uh, if it's your first time tuning in, just a quick few disclaimers. This isn't really a tutorial. Um, it's very much a watch me work type of deal. So we, you know, um, it's not always a smooth. Uh, process in terms of development. Sometimes there's some research and development and, uh, you know, stumbling around before we find our footing, so to speak. And currently, we're working on some menu interfaces for the gamepad. Um, just a second disclaimer for everyone. Um, visually, the menus are in the middle of a redesign. And different menus are inconsistent because of this. So, Keep that in mind, we're just working with functionality on the programming side of things right now. And what we want to get to is, I'll show you, you know, jump to the game here. In our start menu, we have all these different settings. What we've been doing is programming functionality for all of these, uh, you know, different menus to work with the D-pad. Or, sorry, with the gamepad, excuse me. Um, and they do, but... Um, you will notice if we go to the skill menu, for example, um, and we go back to the status menu, or sorry, back to the pause menu, we're always at the status menu. Doesn't matter which uh, menu we go into, we always start back up here. So the first quick thing I want to get done on this stream is um, a sort of reference or assignment on where we, our starting position is, um, depending on which menu we're exiting from, so that if we leave the skill menu, we should be focused on the skill menu and instead of the, the status menu. After that, we'll go to the mission menu and update it so that it can work with the gamepad. You can see here it does not uh, currently. I mean, we can exit and enter it, that's all. That's the only gamepad functionality we have for it. And after that, we'll probably uh, begin the planning phase for a new skill for Maya. Um, which will probably, I'll probably do the planning on this stream and then begin the execution on those, of those plans on tomorrow's stream. So, I don't know, like, we've been doing this for about a week or so now, and these all my streams, about two weeks now, and there's a theme I'm noticing that Friday is usually for developing a new skill for the game. So maybe, maybe that's some sort of thing we can make, maybe we can make it a thing. So that there's something to always, uh, like a treat in terms of development challenges and interest. I know developing a skill is much more interesting than developing menus. It's a little, a little drier, a little less fun. But, it's very crucial. Anywho, let's get my stock music on. Um, add it to media player list. Oh jeez, it's so loud! Maybe it's not loud for you guys, but it's really loud for me. Um, let me know if my audio levels are okay. Um, then I can make adjustments in the future if they are terrible. 
And let's get to it. So, our pause menu widget. It looks like this. Like I mentioned, the scenes are all over the place from menu to menu. But let's hop into the graph here. The menu buttons are assigned on an index, sort of from 0 to 5 for the six buttons. You can see the index here. Um, basically, we want to create a starting position based on where we came from. And I want to say, I mean, it's going to actually, the logic is going to exist right, uh, right here. Um, and we're just basically going to set our index can do this to start. Um, we're going to set button index to let's make it a custom event. All right, let's make this trigger from a custom event. And we'll call it set start index. And we'll hook it up like this. Oh, yeah. Um, Okay, compile and save. Just thinking about where we have to implement these changes. So over here we have our status menu. Um, that's not a place where we want to have our changes though. We want to implement it on a deeper menu. We're trying to make sure it, we're checking that it doesn't always uh, apply focus to the status button. So let's grab the, uh, let's grab the item menu. We'll check this out. Open it up. Um, uh, just rearranging some of the stuff on my other monitor here. Okay. Now then, let's hop into our graph and pretty much right where we destroy our menu and create the pause menu. Thank you, my past self. This this is a perfect illustration as to why common boxes are so important. Okay, and we're gonna basically, basically, pretty simple, we're going to we're gonna call that feature set start index, and we're going to set it to one, because this is the item menu. And it'll get called after we create the menu. Okay, let's hop in here and let's verify how it is working right off the bat. Um, so on construct, we actually have focus onto our status button. If I hit the D-pad down, we're immediately at item button. However, uh, visually we don't have that cue. Well, that's because I broke that chain earlier. Um, Let's verify this is working. Hop into our item menu and let's exit back to our status or our pause menu, our main pause menu. And there we are in the item menu. But uh, the state was set for the default widget color.
So let's let's update this and uh, make sure that doesn't happen. We want things to be cons we want a consistent experience. So let's see where that's happening. In the pause menu, we we call the initialized design here. Um, so what may be happening is this is getting called before we can initialize the design. We may, this is going to have to be hooked up. Um, if there is a conflict, we are going to, we're going to have to gate this. Um, I think we can make use of a gate here. Um, well. Gates are pretty handy. They allow us to verify if we want. Whoops. Didn't mean to actually go inside of that macro. I just closed out of it. Actually, I don't think we need the gate. I think we just plug this right in. I think that should work just fine. Um, on initialized design, we definitely want to call that um, and make sure that this gets set before before we update our, our states, which is what was happening there with that, that blue color. Um, if we order it like this, uh, I think we should maintain the hierarchy of instructions that we want. Let's take a look at this now. Yep, look at that. Exit from the item menu, back into status, or to our main menu, excuse me, and we have our maintained theme, which is great. Um, on construct, we have focus where we want it. Um, so this logic should work for all our menus. Let's quickly apply it to the skill menu as well. And we are where up here. Create pause menu. Create some space. Check this out. Yes, please. Okay. Now Let's call our set index, and we're going to apply it to index 2, because this is our third index. Ah, oh, let's move it up here. Move this down here. That's better. Let's verify it's working. Uh, let's pick Maya this time. Beautiful. Beautiful. We don't have to actually put an instruction on the status menu because uh, by default we apply our starting index at zero. Okay, so we 
Now that we got task one complete, oh, here are some materials that I was working with for the background earlier. Um, not going to work on those right now. We want to set up our mission menu so that we can navigate it with our gamepad. Let's find it here. Okay. So, here's our widget. Yep, using a different style completely. Which, as I mentioned, is just where we are in the changing of the design. But anyhow, we have our mission menu here, and we're probably going to need the, yeah, the button as well. And we can make use of a similar logic. Um, we have defined mission status on the button as a function. Uh, well, what's happening here? It look, looks like there's just a lot of garbage. Oh, that's, that's poor housekeeping. How embarrassing. Okay. Um, set button focus on hover. And we have initial focus as well. That's fine. Um, yeah, we can keep almost all of this. Um, but we're going to pull this out, because we're going to apply this change on uh, to the inventory as a whole. We can actually leverage the, the blueprints that are already existing on our item menu, because it's a similar setup. Um, both menus populate data into a scroll box, so the controls would probably be the same, since we're just adding or like incrementing or de-incrementing? Decrementing? However you say it, adding and lowering um, to the next integer. Okay. Now, we'll grab our define mission status. Or, sorry, our is button focused. Um, well, actually... Is button focused applies the mission status color. Hmm. Marker complete. Um, we're just going to pull all of this out. Oh, let me find where this is being called. How interesting. We don't actually call it from here. We're calling it probably on this widget. Um, creates pause menu. Nope. Creates widget button. Okay. setting colors. Define mission status. This is where we set the color of our buttons. Okay, how do we want to deal with this? I think the first step would be, before we get into button states, let's let's set up our input. I began setting it up here. Um, let's just move this exit down, make some space, and I think we can wholesale copy and paste the these instructions here to be honest um, for the most part anyway um, let's make sure we have our variables of quest index and slot focused um, ideally I would like to not have to rename all of these. 
Okay, so here the variables are called previous and inventory button index. So let's set that up first. I guess it's a, a tip of sorts. This way, um, when we copy and paste, we won't have to replace every single uh, integer manually. Um, we can just rename it after it's been imported, I believe. I believe this will save me some time. Just add a ridiculous amount of space. And control C and control V. Yeah, more space than we needed. But it's always better to have the space you need than be pasting common boxes into other common boxes and then every you can't move you can move everything manually. No fun. Okay, so what we don't need is this um yeah, let's go through here, uh, get rid of this for now, Put, force this on true, um, get player controller, plug this in here, I don't think there's any benefit to having two references to the get player controller. Um, but now you can see we pasted our variables and they have they have been accepted there's no issues oh maybe i spoke too soon oh not really no, it's a sound effect call um we can simply copy that over to because we probably <clears throat> we probably do want a reference to a sound effect um well we can get rid of this um, that's old that's old stuff yeah, button hover sound effect, button focus sound effect, that all sounds good. It sounds like all things I'd want. Alrighty. Set focused inventory button. Um, let's just take a look at what what exactly. Okay, this was a reference to our focused widget. Um, we may need this, but we're not gonna need to copy it over because we need a reference to our actual widget, not just a simple integer uh, that would work across. Uh, any, it doesn't need a specific reference. Uh, where are we here? Mission menu, let's delete this real quick. Um, and those are kind of wrong too. So have to clean that up. Uh, let's compile. Um, scroll box inventory list cannot be found. Of course, that's because we have a scroll box side quests. Um, that should probably be renamed to side missions, uh, whoops, and hopefully we just plug in, and yeah, there we go, that's exactly what I wanted, um, so some of these restrictions actually we won't need, things like item pack, um, it's kind of, kind of an unnecessary, um, check why, why would our inventory be dependent for quests right um, reset inventory focus
Yeah, let's grab this. Uh, okay, so. Now. Now we want to, let's see here. Um, actually, the first thing I like to do is set up a print string. Um, and let's make it a very obvious color. Um, I like to use a dark color when I need something to stand out because all my other print strings are usually bright. And let's plug everything into here. Um, and we want to get our inventory button button index, excuse me. And we just want a readout of what this button's doing. Okay, so. Yeah, let's rename this for consistency. Um, this is our, our, oh, excuse me, our mission button index. This is interesting. Uh, it's a little complex. We're just gonna use up and down for now. We don't need um, to check for left input, right input, um, or our thumbstick just yet. We'll just work with the base levels here of our functionality, our exit, and our up and down buttons. Um, and basically, whether we have items or not, it does not really matter. We kind of just want to go true. Um, yep, I don't think we need this. Look at this uh, mission flow. Uh, you know, let's make this, you know, I recall the menu being blue, so let's just make it a uh, bright yellow to stand out. Forgot that the background um, is that default one, that older style. Okay, let's hop into here. Take a look at the mission menu. Okay, so states and button colors aside we have a of course of course silly me we have a clamp set up um, because we copied things in it did make things easier in some respect but we have a clamp that is actually checking against our uh, item pack capacity which is not Anything we want, to be honest. Excuse me. Um, we actually want to be checking against our um, Oh Jesus. Oh no, we have to undo. Silly me. And let's compile that. And just for peace of mind, for my own sanity, let's check and make sure the item menu is functional. Beautiful, okay. Yeah, gotta be more mindful of that. Um, it's a risk you run when everything starts to look the same. Um, anyhow, Here's what we want to delete. The reference to our item pack, not 
anything we need. Um, and has no items, doesn't matter. Let's just plug this in here. Oh my gosh, if I can connect the pins, okay. There we go, um, scroll into view. Uh, we'll keep that for now. Yep, so this check is if we're at the top of our, at the top of our quest or our mission index, we can't go up anymore. Um, if not, we can uh, basically focus down. Um, but that's not right. This should be at the bottom. Okay, so let's set up our connection to our array. This side mission log here. Um, Get a reference and put it right in the middle where our character was. We're not checking the character for um, the quest uh, information. That's actually all in the game. The game mode has the array for the quest uh, data, side quest data. So we want to get log, get mission log, side mission log. And from this array, we want to get the length. Um, and all arrays start at zero, and so does my indexing. So that should be just fine if we plug it like this. Um, and these clamps. Um, we want the maximum to be here, and we want, isn't there another clamp? Oh, here it is. Yeah, plug that in here. Okay, so let's save and compile, and real quick, I want to check what our... mission log looks like in terms of length seven elements so yeah let's hop in here get to the mission menu uh okay so not getting any inputs i'm just going to open up the debug view on another monitor here so I can see what's happening. It's actually odd. Uh, the instructions are firing through. Um, It's kind of, uh, we're getting some feedback from our uh, scroll box as well already. However, oh my gosh, the print string color didn't change. That's why it's there. I knew I wanted to change it for that exact reason. Anyhow, you can kind of see if you look hard enough that everything's working as it's supposed to in terms of how the indexes are being counted. Um, geez, okay. Um, that's fine. Save and compile. 
All right here. So let's grab our mission menu again, and we want to begin toggling our states. Uh, we have our previous. Okay, so we are going to have to. go into our side mission button. Um, let me close my game mode here. Don't need that open. I can close this. Um, Let's see, let's see. organize my layout here a bit okay so yeah let's make a state cycle type of event here custom events um, well actually you know what we probably I wonder if we just grab it from the inventory button um, and pull out some useful logic because they're going to be handled the same way. Like if we just grab all of this, um, I think that'll give us a solid foundation of data. All right, let's close that inventory button. You don't want to be changing things there accidentally. Okay, so now we have our slot colors that we set for the neutral hovered and pressed states. We may not need a pressed uh, state. Let's just pull this uh, down and out. I just work with these two. Um, that's interesting. Um, anyways, these variable references, we probably won't need those either because we can pull that data, I believe, right from our defined mission status. And we can actually delete this. This is really, really old code. It's kind of just left out. Um, just left out with no regard. No love was given to that. Okay, so now that we have our Define mission status outside here. You can see we're kind of having the exact same, a similar sort of decision tree. Um, very interesting. Very interesting, actually. This is defining whether the, the mission has been obtained and whether it's been completed um, and then it gives it a, an assigned color based on that but here we are we're sort of not sort of excuse me i'm just getting lost in my own thoughts 
Um, here we're setting if the player is focusing on these items or not. Let's take a look at how we would maybe like to handle um, these states. I'm going to quickly um, set up, not set up, actually I have an open, set up my Photoshop here, um, just do some planning. But I'll set it up in the sense of letting you guys see what's going on. Shouldn't be too much longer here. Oh, there we go. And oh, look at this. That's some inception going on. Let's move that out of here. Okay. So, move my coffee out of the way so I can use my tablet. Right. Let's move in here. Um, basically, hop into our designer. We have a block, a texture block for each quest slot. Now, you know, it's something like. Yeah, I get more narrow, more narrow brush. Oh, jeez, it's not my Photoshop. You know, ever since I installed Photoshop CC, um, I've actually been having issues with it. I think maybe there are settings that are a bit terrible that maybe it integrated that hog up resources potentially, I don't know. Um, so uh, we got our, I love my awesome drawing, I'm an artist. Okay, yeah, we have our button, looks like this, the uh, quest name goes here, and then at the end we have a little signifier, if it's been complete or not. And it's basically how our quest menu looks. Um, Oh my gosh, yeah, this is a little annoying. Um, is this is this frozen or what? Doesn't appear to be. Uh, duplicate it. Oh, yeah, we don't want to actually duplicate everything. Let's make a selection, just duplicate that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, look into Photoshop CC because why is the newer, better version of Photoshop performing worse? Riddle me this. Okay. Uh, right now we have a button that has. Yeah, so this drawing's accurate. Um, we have bright text, um, and we have three states. If I just look over my other monitor here, we have, let's look at the enumeration. We have not acquired, oh, I can't type, or I can't spell, not acquired, Acquired and complete states. And we kind of want to color code these appropriately, but also uh, the other thing we have to do is make sure that we're applying proper states to these as well so that we can tell when uh, we have hovered um, on, a, on a button so we can see what's going on. So, let's think about this. Perhaps, perhaps we have a... Yeah, 
let's move this guy down here, and we can probably work on this layer. I wonder if there's like a snap song or something. It's causing it to behave like this. Super laggy Photoshop. Okay, so uh, since we're using blue, let's just pretend um, this is a button for Maya. Um, So perhaps a neutral button would be something like this. We would have bright text and a darker uh, background. Let's organize this a little bit. Oh, jeez. Okay. This should help us... Uh, determine what we want and work out through these different design types okay and oh, let's just make use of this Oh, is that right? That's not right. Well, let's grab this one, bring it here. Oh gosh, Photoshop's burning me right now. Okay. Um, completed quests already have a signifier. Um, but maybe completed acquired quests would have hmm. they would have a signifier but I wonder if we could maybe invert invert this color scheme um, so I guess a normal quest would look like this and the acquired one is that layer five. Uh, I wonder if we could just oops, I'll do something like this. Um, uh, yeah, whatever, just make it blue. Um, Yeah, that invert didn't exactly work, um, but it's this idea where maybe um, the button text would get darker and the background would be, uh, oops. Oh my gosh, Photoshop! What are you doing to me? Um, uh, something like this, I think. Okay, let's apply this. I'm gonna switch monitors back. Um, and I swear, sometimes I can get more use working physically using a sketchbook or a pencil and paper. Um, let's change the properties of our view to my main monitor here. And we can continue.
Oh, someone just got paired with me for watching work. Let's say hello. Okay. Right, so we have all these references here that we copied in from a different widget, which obviously, obviously will not serve us. Um, the first thing we have to do is set our button states based on their status. So basically here we have um, cross-referencing the status and then for Vance and Naya. So, slot color for the side quest button. Okay, where are we? Uh, so we have slot color and text color, basically what we just defined. Um, so for Vance, the button would be, this is for not acquired. So actually, actually, we don't set that out here. We actually do set it in this function. Um, and that's, that gets called as soon as these get placed. Um, if we look at our old one, we were um, adding that child to the item box. And then as soon as it was placed, we would call it. So we'll have to we'll have to treat it in a similar manner. Um, I mean, we do actually already. This instruction doesn't have to change. This is our construct. So we already have those colors assigned. Uh, but to be honest, they may. Uh, it's not a function on here. Like they're not bound. I actually don't think they're bound. If we're looking at our I wonder if I replace this with a border. How many things would break? Uh, let's grab this button texture. And let's apply it to our border. Essentially getting the same effect. Um, but this does what we need to a better degree. Um, let's replace with child. Beautiful. And let's save those changes and compile and fix those references. So, yeah, say called button state. Um, quantity doesn't really matter. You can get rid of that.
Yes, rename this to, you know, emission slot and go back to our graph, save and compile. Um, these do need a target. However, let's fix the defined emission first. Essentially, what we want to do is um, not necessarily apply these um, to the slot color. Um, we don't want it to be a bound um, value. You kind of want to treat it the same way we were treating uh, this or similar to actually um, if you go to our status menu or our pause menu you can see we have this initialized design here where we run this in the beginning and essentially cross-reference the color pack that we the desired colors we want for the character that's being played we want to run a similar type of logic but we're cross-checking against um, the mission status right here. Um, so let's let's break this up and get this done right. Switch on side mission status, and then we're gonna switch again. Um, uh, let's get active character. And we'll switch on this. Gotta love those switch nodes. Okay, so. Um, if we hop into the designer. Let's take a look at our brush uh, color, and we can bind it to a variable. I want to check how this is handled on the inventory slots. Let's jump over there, inventory button. Ah, that's right. So currently the inventory button is just using a border as well with brush color. It's unbound. We're just setting it via brush color. But we have our color saved. Very cool. Okay. So then. Let's close this, get to our okay. Let's grab our border mission slot and Um, set brush color. That's red, right? Brush color. Um, and we're going to want to... Will these work? They do work. Wonderful. Okay. Um, and I don't think they're being used. I mean, they are. Oh, they're being used in that really old function we do not need anymore. Let's hop back over to our define mission status, find references. Yeah, they're being set up here. Uh, basically, 
because we're toggling these states, um, we're cycling them, but they need to be set per character. We're sort of using this similar to the initial design on our other ver on our other widgets. Typing to the collaborator and watch me work. Looks like he's working with ZBrush. Very cool. ZBrush is an awesome, awesome, awesome software. Oh. Jeez, if only I could type. Let's go back to grade school. All right, so we want to set these on each of our characters for quests that are not acquired. And for Quests that are not acquired. The background is dark. I'm just looking at my Photoshop document. We sort of have that set up. Oh, what color do we want to use? Let's pick a blue uh, here, like that, I guess, and set it as. Uh, let me. Point six six and it's supposed to be darker. So maybe oops point three three. Hmm. Don't like how that looks. Um maybe let's just try it. We can always adjust this after. And the text is going to be bright. And we're sort of getting the opposite effect if the quest is active. We have a bright, a brightly colored slot color and a dark, well, a darker um, text color. So let's adjust these after. And the cool thing is you just set it up here once. And if it's completed, I think if the quest is completed, it's the same color. Is that how you want to do it? Uh, TBD. TBD on that one. If the quest is completed, we will determine what color we want it to be. Probably something neutral, maybe gray or white or um, something that that tells you that don't worry about this, it's done. Maybe we can use a very desaturated version of our color. Okay, um, yeah, we can leave the colors as they are. Let's just focus on programming, because um, then when we come back to the menus for the design work later, we can adjust and fine tune for maximum visual appeal slash, uh, you know, uh, intuitive communication.
And when we cycle these states, um, whoops, oh, let's grab this. Yeah, we want to change the border slots and, oh, definitely the text color. make that a variable. Now these guys here, um, well, interestingly, uh, let's, let's give it a proper name. Let's call it border underscore. Uh, uh, sig sign box. Uh, oh, mission mark. Yeah, it's a fine name. A little long, but So if we change the state to neutral, we should be grabbing in our not acquired. Hold on. This is interesting. Um, if the quest, actually, if the cycle, if the button state is neutral, we should be selecting, um, it's taking me a little long, uh, I'm going to be totally honest, did not get too much sleep last night, um, maybe affecting my stream ability. Okay, sorry about that, everyone. Um, these, um, not so much these, but, um, We need to set this up on a sequence. We don't want to switch. Um, we might as well set up everything, all references on each button. Uh, something like this would be better. Um, and these actually have to be a different variable. Um,
That's fine. Um, slot color focused. Let's find references. None. Okay, let's make use of this guy. And let's bring it down here. Keep all these colors together. I wonder if we can just uh, replace. And it's not exactly focused, but it is acquired. It's a little uh, misleading um, using the word active for the state and for the quest status. Uh, we're going to call this acquired. Uh, this is our reference colors for um, not acquired. And I'll do a third one afterwards. So how do we want to proceed from here? Actually, no, not at all. Um, let's give us a proper name. Um, Text color acquired, um, and we also want to apply this here. Let's duplicate our slot color. And set this up like this. Sweet. Just standing this guy on Watch Me Work, um, actor. He's making a really sweet mechanical uh, plant model in ZBrush. Okay. Now, if our bun state is neutral, we actually apply these color palettes that we've established. Slot color acquired, not acquired, based on the mission status. And we can actually, I think, I think we can make use of this same Nope. It's a little bit different. Select here. Um, I'm probably use the same enumeration. Uh, let's use text color acquired. Oh, Jesus. Okay, the promote to variable. Um, and redefine, redefine these uh, colors. However, Let's double check one item over here in our event graph first. Our mission markers, um, these are 
I believe, using brush color. Yes, sir, they are. Yep, so these actually will need um, I'll make use of the same select uh, logic. We're going to apply our text color into acquired and not acquired. Um, we're just going to have to rename it because it's a little misleading. It's not text. We'll call it our marker color. Uh, let's jump back here. Um, I call this marker color and marker color and we are going to split this gotta love it uh, okay actually I don't love it uh, when you have to split these up and they get larger and larger and larger ideally I'd like it to convert the way you would have an integer to a string, but you can right click and get the specified color, and we want that to be the same as our marker color. Um, to be honest, these should be the other way around. Um, just to maintain our uh, log. Oh gosh. Okay. Well, that is why they're not. That's fine. I mean, it's labeled. Uh, so call this text color acquired. And we'll duplicate this text color not acquired. And that's going to go up here. And we're gonna try we're gonna try and keep things as neat and clear as possible. Um something like this, I guess. Oh, whoops. Yeah, we definitely want to hook those up. It's a little it's a little bit critical. Okay, let's jump back over to our event graph and grab our text, punch that in here. And if we're hovered, we do something else um, to these buttons. Um, I think Let's just try, for the sake of building our functionality, we don't need to get our colors perfect. Um, let's just make, you know, super dark, super dark gray. And um, it's got a reference to these as well. We want to set this color to, uh, I guess, white. And let's put this as white as well. Why is there a, why is this here? Uh, just split. There we go. Okay. I don't think we need those. Now let's let's get back into our game view and see what's going on. Okay. I'm just moving my widget over for 
debugging. Um, okay. Um, okay, so we're moving around our menu. But, like a bogus goof, I forgot to do something. It's basically this. Um, we need to actually cast to our side mission button. Um, so go something like this. Get out of here. Um, and want to state cycle this. Sort of replacing the existing logic. Um, sure, let's put a sound effect here. Now then, we should get some kind of feedback. Um, I'm just, I'll, I'll move this on screen so you guys can see. I'm just uh, passing these through just so we can adjust our marker and marker box um, to make sure that these two are invisible if we need them to be. Oh, geez. No, we were not supposed to do that. We were supposed to adjust the color of the mission marker itself. That's funny. Um, let's just hop over to the event graph. Uh, mission status marker. In terms of color, it, we only need to affect one. It should inherit the color of the other. Um, Oh, and if, if these slots are active, are complete, we definitely want it to be um, oh no, let's just leave it black for now. That's fine. And decide how we want to color code these. Now then. Right, so um, we're coloring them based on what we said, um, but we're not really getting any feedback as to where we are. Um, I'm just going to move this off to the side so I can debug properly, or use this debug view. Um, state cycle. Index. Uh, hmm. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I'm such a goof. Yeah. This is actually all correct and perfect. I don't want to be mucking up that. Um, let's go to our mission menu here. Yeah, that might help if we hover on the item. That way, when we get in here, we can actually check if it's hovered, we'll change it. 
Um, Whoops. Um, those menus don't work. They actually... We haven't gone to them yet, so... They kind of break the game if we try and execute on them. Uh, okay, so... We're setting the wrong color per character, which is interesting. Um, but what is working is that we are able to see very easily which uh, item we're looking at. Right, we can quickly see, oh, you know, I'm on quest one, two, three, four, I get it. See which ones are acquired, not acquired. Um, this color is not very uh, good. I think it's got to be way darker for the acquired. Um, and I guess this is complete, the complete state. Um, and the signifier is working too, which is really neat. But we got to set our color for acquired and swap the instruction. How silly of me. Okay, let's jump into define mission status. And <laughs> that's funny. Um, let's just throw this on top, replace this here with that, and vice versa. Okay, so for acquired, um, we noticed that this was way too light. Um, um, so we define all of these. Um, let's pull this down here in line with what we are working with. Um, basically whether or not this is visible, the quest signifier. Um, I'll split this. Yep, it's pink, as I suspected. Um, for complete, yeah, let's just leave it as, um, you know, maybe like 0.01. So it's just off black. Um, and, and this, I don't know, point. Nine five or 9.8, I guess. Let's hit the right key. And this one here too would also be 0.95. Okay, I'll pull this off to the side and let's jump here. Okay, so these aren't colored. This is complete. Um, and our mark color is not getting assigned, which is interesting. So, 
I believe all we have to do at the end of this function is to call a state cycle um, We should have our menu color coded appropriately. Yep. Although, Okay, so actually this is a little uh, conflicting here. Let's move these down. Um, for completed, um, let's just place it at um, like gray and white, I think. And for our color, we're probably not grabbing the right um, set brush color. That should be correct. I wonder why that's not. Let's take a look at what's going on here. Um, hmm. we define mission status for all of them. I feel as though there are a lot of unnecessary variables, like the status, the quest number, um, if we have the struct, because all of that already has those that information, which is interesting. Save this, take a look at what's happening in game, and then 
I'll cross-reference with my item menu. Whoops, wrong one. Okay. So, colors are assigned. Focus is not, though. Um, these visibilities are correct, but for some reason... First thing we should fix is our acquired text colors a little bit too um, bright still. Let's drop that down way lower. Now that should make things a little easier. So our marker color is being set and on um, the mission menu, or sorry, on the quest button menu. Um, I believe there's a slight conflict here, um, not with initial focus, um, to be honest, initial focus should fire through here, um, and we can probably, um, no, we're going to need to use this, I won't delete it just yet. Uh, I just want to make sure everything's color coding first before we get into a little bit more of the details. Um, if these are complete, we set them to white. No, that's not right. If they're neutral and they're hovered, oh no, that's fine. Marker color acquired, not acquired. If we define mission status, we set our marker colors. Isn't that odd how Actually, it's not, um, but anyways. Anyways. These are our specified colors. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that'll do it. We only need to connect all of this. Um, basically, we just need to make this um, like that. I wonder if that was our issue. The status. On our event graph, cycle button.
Okay. Let's jump in here. We must not be assigning the right, um... Right, so... Rush color is here. Oh. I see. I see exactly what's happening. Um, um, can we set content? Beautiful. Yeah, let's place this like that. Uh, this should, this should solve our issues. Um, oh, whoops. Yeah, want to plug that in there. Uh, okay. Now then. Um. Oh, interesting. Okay. We may. Um, so that's absolutely working now, which is fantastic. Um, we may actually just have to make these very bright. Um, take a look how they read. Oh, shoot, excuse me. Um, these are our markers. And these are our text. Um, these should be opposites. We need to ensure our text stays dark on the hovered state. And make those markers uh, a lot brighter. Can we make them the same? Beautiful. Um, in this instance, it doesn't exactly matter. Um, the markers are not visible. Um,
Uh, neat. So we can pretty easily tell what we have highlighted. Um, one item I would actually... I'll, I'll address these quick. Um, this initial focus, we need, to not, we need to apply a delay here. Um, just so that we can populate our status and then apply our focus afterwards. Um, I don't think that'll be an issue. Let's see. Because we're um, spawning that on a for loop of an array, I wonder how that's going to affect what has focus. Let's apply... Uh, yeah. Still no bueno. Um, Um, this is sort of the end result we're looking for. Uh, let's continue working on some functionality. Um, uh, if we apply initial focus to here, but that doesn't matter because we don't specify. what we want. Um, this is actually more accurate. Uh, what I also want to set up is, and this will be on the button actually, this number here, we need to apply a color to it. Uh, it is a variable, or it's not, so let's uh, class number, whoops, text block, mission number, okay, um, and basically we apply it to here, it's another one of our elements, let's shift these down so they are actually in the order they should be. Um, so we should be able to just use, make a great use of this. And hopefully plug this in here as well. Can they, can they both use it? Looks like it. Sweet. Um, let's split this. Actually, let's both. Um, like, why well, have two if they both use the exact same result? Um, and they can be driven from the same instruction. I don't know. We should have our mission text show up. Um, on our mission menu itself, uh, we also have a reference to the number here, which is driven by this bound function um, to the text number itself. Um, and here we can actually make use of a cast, um, or not cast, well, I mean, we're, we are 
excuse me, we are already casting two um, these, so let's uh, promote one of these to a variable. Basically, uh, focus mission uh, reference. And we'll plug and play. Uh, whoops. Man. These double clicks are killing me. Maybe it's time for a new mouse. Yep, by setting up a reference here on our state change, we actually can call call this from here um, struct, right? Because now the mission itself, or the widget, has the data we need. Um, we can split or I guess break um, and we have our oh interesting so the side mission structure doesn't have an index of what quest it is and that is because that's because it's actually a uh, it's referencing the quest or the mission number based on the array position. Um, but we should be able to uh, do a find, find item, right? And you know, I think we can just plug this like that. And we want to do it just like that. Now this, I believe, should give us some details, or at least a readout. Um, actually, just so we probably need to use this same logic um, on this function as well. Yeah, right? Whoops. And origin as well. Uh, to be determined for deletion. Okay, so we'll come back to this. Side mission number, side mission status, color. Um, what is what is this being used on? Text block five. Um, oh, yes. You know what? We actually do want that. That's pretty cool. Um, not that. Here. Yep, that is... Let's go set this up with... Now, based on the status, we have a different readout. Um, okay, let's quickly get a reference um, to the active character enumeration and uh, split these out. I mean to say select. I always say split for some reason. Uh, so inactive quests, let's go dark. Uh, 
Um, for quests that are obtained, let's go with a brighter value. And completed ones can have white. Um, maybe a little bit uh, more muted. Don't want that white to be too sharp. Uh, okay, so target array is... Oh, it's actually this one. Now then. Let's take a look at this. Um, mission. Our initial focus is working and we have our number readout with uh, complementing color text. Do you ever look at a word for too long and it looks like it's spelled wrong? That's what I'm having right now with the word mission. It looks, it's, maybe I've been staring at this computer for too long. Um, um, one issue here is we can actually go down a bit further. Um, we need to reduce our clamp right Where is our clamp going to be at? This clamp here, our max, has to be reduced by one, I think. And what's this for? This is for oh, increasing our value. So we set the previous index, clamp, um, Let's just try to keep some semblance of logic and order. Um, okay, so got some weird uh, graphical issue here. Let's just close the mission menu and open the sky back up. Compile, sweet. Um, one other detail I wanted to do is I have these divider boxes set up. Um, what I would like to do is be able to change this color dynamically and not on each individual one because that's kind of crazy. But perhaps if what I'm wondering is if we throw this guy into a border, wrap with the border. Um, and I got this awful white, uh, which might look good if that's what you want, but it's not what I want. Um, get rid of all padding. And content color, can we shift it? Yes, we can. Beautiful. Okay, so this is our accent block gradient. Um, Actually, to be honest, we do want to apply a little bit of padding to left and right. Um, something like five would be pretty good. So it's just a hint off. Um, and again, we don't want an actual brush color on here. Um, we only want to be able to affect the contents. Wonderful. Okay. Now. What we want to do is the painful task of 
Uh, let's make a new theme here. Uh, we'll just rename it to um, color block gradient. And I'm just going to grab each of these along the way. Basically reset this back to white. Um, but so we're going to insert the saturation, but keep the value. That's information that's going to be shared uh, no matter which character is, is on here. Now, I'll grab this, throw it up there, drop this to zero, and do it to the next block. So you could totally build an asset like this in Photoshop or, you know, the image generation tool of your choice. But I kind of like how flexible and adjustable I can make it just by throwing a bunch of empty slots into a horizontal box and just apply a, a color value to it and then adjust that, um, being able to adjust that as we please. Which is pretty cool. Um, okay, let's oh, what am I doing? I'm being a goof. Um, that's fine. Let's just <laughs> zero this out on all of them. Um, we don't have to save the color um, at all. Um, this is actually supposed to be 0 0.5. 0 0.5, and it's supposed to be 0 0.7. And this is supposed to be 1. Okay. That's fine. Grab our tent, drop this down to 0. Oh, 0. Okay, so let's save this. Uh, basically, we can grab our border accent gradient, make it a variable so we can reference it, compile, save, jump to our, uh, basically on our construct, and grab this dude. Set content, color, and opacity, and pretty much um, excuse me, just do a select. All right, dump that here, and uh, actually not from there, but rather. Oops, let's move this up here. Where do we want to be working? Yep, this will work. Get our active care. Oops, active care. Oh my gosh, I can't type. Okay. Get her active character, and just like this, we make it either. Um, just delete that. Um, we make it blue. And we can make this one green.
And now from here, if we play, we should be able to get a similar effect as to what I had set up here manually. But go to our mission menu, and we have a nice green, uh, you know, chunky gradient. Which is the exact look I was going for. Um, I guess it's about 2.30. Um, I will end the stream for today. Um, what I want to get into tomorrow is working on uh, Maya's... A new skill for Maya. I think every Friday that's something we will do. Um, oh, Tim Elliott. I'm so sorry. I don't know if you're still watching. Um, I'm a terrible streamer. I feel so bad. Um, totally missed your comment there. Um... But, you know, let the records show that I apologized and I feel super bad about it. Um, but with that being said, yeah, I'll end the stream for today. Um, tomorrow I want to get into a new skill. and Well, not a new skill for me. Um, I sort of have an idea of how to, of how we're going to tackle it. But before, like maybe an hour before the stream, tomorrow I'll just... Um, create a proper plan of all the different components that are going to be required. But we're going to be building a new skill for Maya, um, sort of like a stationary, uh, high resource cost, but high power output, uh, sustained projectile. So you can think of something basically like a high velocity, like think of like a fireman's, like a, sorry, like a firefighter's uh, hose, but like times 10, like a high, high output, so it's going to cost a lot of energy, uh, high pressure, high damage, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it should have a really cool, interesting particle system, I think. Um, we'll make use of some line, trace by line, based on where we're aiming, and adjust the player controls. Uh, there's going to be a whole bunch of things coming into play, but I think it should make for a very interesting stream. Anyhow, thanks for watching, guys. If you're able to like and subscribe um, to us on YouTube, that would be a huge, huge, huge help, um, and it's greatly appreciated. Um, helps more than you think. We're trying to reach 100 subscribers to get a custom URL on YouTube. Jeez, it's taking forever. Um, so every every subscriber uh, helps us a great deal. Uh, so until next time, later.